Good morning, guys. March 25th, dilation equations. Just a little side note, I noticed today I had a software update. Um, so if you're having any sort of tech issues, make sure you take care of that. Um, it'll make everything a little bit easier to sync through OneNote. All right, so first to do now, hopefully you already took a look. But in the diagram of triangle ADC below, EB is parallel to DC. A is 9, ED is 5, and AB is 9.2. What is the length of AC to the nearest tenth? All right, so AC is that whole side length. Now, you probably went into setting up a proportion, but let's think about why first. They said the corresponding sides, EB and DC, are parallel. Very important to today's lesson. All right, they say parallel. We're thinking, okay, a dilation took place. We have similar triangles. Corresponding angles congruent corresponding sides proportional. So that's why you set up a proportion. All right, something along the lines of smaller triangle over bigger triangle. Now where did we get that 14 from? Add the whole side length for the bigger triangle is equal to 9.2 over the unknown side length for AC. Smaller triangle over bigger triangle smaller triangle over bigger triangle and those pieces correspond so we set them up in the same fraction cross multiply you get 9x is equal to 128.8 right, follow through with solving and we get x is equal to 14.3 one repeating round it to the nearest tenths place would be 14.3. The 1 tells the 3 to stay put, and we're good to go. So how do we write the equation of a line when it gets dilated? All right, there's two scenarios, but it all revolves around the fact that we have similar triangles, all right, and a lot of times, look at the do now, corresponding sides that are parallel, okay, similar triangles, parallel side lengths, the dilation took place. So the first scenario for a dilation equation. When the center of dilation, so the point in which it dilates about, is a point not on the line, so at some random point in space, for example. And a lot of times in these problems, these regions questions, it's typically at the origin. So we have some random point, all right, which I just highlighted in green there. That point is not on any line that we're dealing with in the red triangle or the blue triangle. It's just some random point out in space. If that is the case, okay, you can see the corresponding side lengths are parallel. Okay, parallel lines. Which means that these lines that correspond to each other have the same slope. All right and a different y-intercept. So if I extended to the corresponding lines, like this blue line here, it hits the y, hits the y-axis. I extend the red line here, and it hits the y-axis. They hit, they hit the y-axis in a different spot, essentially. So yeah, different y-intercept. Now, why is that important? Remember, when you're writing the equation of a line, you need slope and y-intercept. So same slope, different y-intercept. Now, we'll get into this. This might not make sense just yet. Just jot it down. All right, we'll take a look at some problems well, where we'll have to do this. In this case, when it's at some random point not on the line, we multiply the y-intercept. multiply the y-intercept by the scale factor. Now when we do that, we just have to make sure that our equation is in slope-intercept form.
which of course is y equals mx plus b. Why is that important? Because then we can see our y-intercept. We could see our slope. We could see our y-intercept. All right. But the big idea here, guys, a dilation takes place. We're dealing with parallel side lengths. All right. Parallel side lengths. So for example, this red side length here is parallel to that blue side length there. All right. So that's one scenario. Once again, this is when it's at some random point that's not on the line. Okay. Next, the second scenario. The dilation when the center of dilation is a point on the line. So you can see this diagram here. Okay, the center of dilation is O. All right, and that's a point on the line we're dealing with. If that's the case, everything just kind of expands from that point. All right, but it expands along the path of that line and just keeps going on and on and on forever, but along on the same line. Same thing in the other direction. It just keeps moving. All right, everything, all these points just kind of expand, all right, on the exact same path, all right, so it ends up being the exact same line. All right, there's no change in y-intercept. There's no change in slope. It's literally the exact same line, the exact same equation. All right, so if this is the scenario, once again, this is when it's on the line. The center of dilation is on the line. That means we have same slope. All right, the line didn't change, the slope didn't change. Same y-intercept. Same equation, that means. Same line. Everything's the same. So if this is the case, we should actually get excited by this case because we actually don't have to do anything. We just rewrite the equation. All right, nothing changed. We don't have to do any math. We don't have to do anything. We just have to check to see is that point that they tell us, it's centered at some random point, is that point on the line? If we see it's a point on the line, we're essentially done. We just rewrite the equation. We just have to understand why. Okay, it's a point on the line, so it just expands from that point. Everything stays along the same path. All right, nothing changes. So let's take a look at this explore. We're going to go through this kind of quickly, but line n is, a, is represented by the equation 3x plus 4y equals 20. Use GeoGebra to graph it. Copy the graph below. Okay. So, let's take a look. 3x plus 4y equals 20. So, Let's grab a couple points from here, like a point zero five and a point four two. All right, so this is the equation for this line so we have to determine are we going to have a line that's parallel to this that'll have the same slope and a different y-intercept for example this is just freehand if it was something like is a line going to end up something like this All right, I know that could look a lot more parallel All right. or is the line going to stay exactly the same the equation stays the same, everything stays the same. Here's what we check for, ready? Determine and state the equation of line P, the image of line N, the one we just graphed, after a dilation of scale factor one-third centered at the point 42. So let's lock in on the fact that they said it's centered at the point 42. Well guys, the point 42 in this case is on the line. Okay. So if I check 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, it's that point right there. If that's the case, once again, this line will just expand 
Okay, it'll move. It just keeps going in the same direction. Same direction. The line doesn't change. Okay, same slope, same y-intercept, same everything. You can just copy the equation as they gave it to you. Okay, so determine and state the equation. It's the exact same thing. Alright, and why is that? Because the center of dilation pore 2 is a point on the line. Now, so that was that second scenario we talked about, where it's a point on the line, all right? If it was a point at some random point, like the origin, that's not on the line, okay? What we would have done, we would have gotten this equation, 3x plus 4y equals 20, put it in slope-intercept form, so we could visualize the slope and the y-intercept. We would have kept the same slope, and then just multiplied the y-intercept by the scale factor of one-third. All right, but we'll see how that looks in another example now. So, example one, line L is mapped onto line M by a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of two. The equation of line L is 3x minus y equals four. Determine and state the equation for line M. So, we have a scale factor of two and we have the dilation centered at the origin. And the equation we're dealing with is 3x minus y equals 4. So let's check. All right? Let's check if this if the origin is a point on that line. You might already be saying no, it's not. Well, let's just check it. three x minus y equals four. Okay, you can see the origin, right? If I made a point there for the origin, it's not on the line. So we're gonna end up with a different line. Alright, so first step in this scenario, when once again it's a point not on the actual line we're dealing with, let's put our equation into slope-intercept form. So we'll subtract 3x on both sides. On the left here we end up with negative y, and on the right is equal to negative 3x plus 4. Remember we want to write the x term first. And now we actually have a negative 1 in front of that y, if there's a negative symbol. So we need to divide out negative 1 all throughout. So we end up with y is equal to 3x minus 4. Okay? So you can see right now, your slope is equal to 3. And the y-intercept of the initial line is negative 4. We're not going to do anything with the slope. Remember, parallel lines, right? Dilation, parallel lines, same slope. The y-intercept, however, is going to change because, once again, it's at some point that's not on the line. You take the y-intercept and you multiply it by the scale factor. The scale factor is 2. So multiply just the y-intercept by 2, and that'll give us a new equation, which will be y equals 2, 3x, negative 4, times 2, 
is negative 8. And that's it. So guys, it's really just a matter of not any overcomplicated algebraic steps. It's really remembering the two scenarios, when it's at a point on the line and when it's a point off the line, like here. So y equals 3x minus 4. It just became y equals 3x minus 8 after that dilation of 2 centered at the origin. All right, let's just see how that looks in GeoGebra. y equals 3x minus 8. All right, you can see we're dealing with parallel lines. All right? Different y-intercepts, same slope. All right, so it makes sense. Once again, a dilation occurred. I can't say it enough. All right, you're probably getting sick of hearing it, but dilations, parallel lines, same slope. Okay? Now example two. Line y equals... 3x minus 1 is transformed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2 centered at 3, 8. The line's image is, well, you can see all your answer choices here have the same slope of 3. That makes sense because, once again, it's a dilation. We have to know what is the y-intercept. So first step, graph this line and see if that center here, see if that center point of 3, 8 is a point on the line. y equals 3x minus 1. All right. So you could plot the point 3, 8, or you could just look at your graph and see if it's there. Put 3, comma, 8. All right. Okay. So you can see the point is on the line. That means nothing changes. Okay, look, look at your answer choices. All right, it's the exact same thing. Y equals three x minus one. Choice four. So if there, if the center is a point on the line, nothing changes. Yes, this is an actual region question. You so you just have to remember the scenario. Usually, when they're it's centered at an actual point other than the origin, usually it ends up being a point on the line. But go check it. And then usually when it's centered at the origin. It's some random point that's off the line, okay? So nothing changes. If, all right, this is just if, if it was centered at the origin or some point off the line, we would have just taken the, that y-intercept there and multiplied it by 2, the scale factor, which would have ended up giving you choice 3, y equals 3x minus 2. But that's just a scenario, all right, for a different time. All right, one more, and then you'll try the rest on your own. All right, the line y equals 2x minus 4 is dilated by a scale factor of 3 over 2, centered at the origin. Okay, so remember, centered at the origin, probably not on the line, but we'll check it. Which equation represents the image of the line after the dilation? Okay, so y equals 2x minus 4. Let's graph it. All right, we have our equation graph now. So centered at, it wasn't centered at some random point, it's centered at the origin. Okay, is the origin on the line? Well, of course, you can see, no, it's not. All right, it's centered at some random point off the line. Okay, that means we're going to have the same slope and a different y-intercept. So something changes now because it's off the line. All right, so y equals 2x minus 4. All right, not so bad because that's in slope-intercept form. We don't even need to solve for y here, all right? But what we need to do, which is essential, all right, is change our y-intercept. We're not changing the slope, same slope, different y-intercept. So negative 4 for that y-intercept. We're going to multiply by the scale factor, remember, okay, which is 3 over 2. All right, so our new equation is going to be y equals... Same slope, 2, x, negative 4 times 3 over 2 will be negative 6. Choice 
too. All right, big idea here, guys. All right, same slope, and then two other scenarios. It's always going to be the same slope. Sometimes it's going to be the exact same y-intercept when it's a point that's on the line, that's center. All right, the center of dilation is a point on the line. But in a scenario like this, if the center of dilation is a point off the line, just multiply that y-intercept by the scale factor, and you can get your new line. Remember to update your iPads, okay? Try the rest of these problems, and then check in later in the day. Make sure you're looking at your remind, okay? I'll let you know when I post the answer case so you can check how you did. Send me questions, all right? Text me on remind, all right? Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you manana.